Hey there! As you probably guessed from the title, this is part one of two where we're covering just the sculpt of my Monster Hunter Datura horn. I'll link the painting video here when it's done. I lost some of the footage from the very beginning of the process, but it was basically using some bronze wire, my favorite Super Sculpey firm, and some tin foil to make a vaguely pipe-shaped base. Now that we've got the basic shape, it's time to start making these thorns. I feel like they're more thorns than horns. They could be either, I guess. I noticed they're not exactly round, so I'm giving them a bit of angularity and putting in some lines. Like I mentioned in my video where I made the weapon stand, I've been super inspired while playing Monster Hunter, so this probably won't be the last weapon I make. Let's tackle the middle gem. There's a little part of this gem that's taller, so let's add that on top. Next up, the lines and texturing. I like to use my conical tool for this, since it's a much softer line than my needle tool.
get a little extra grit to it, I used a small bit of padding from the inside of a jewelry box. It may not show now, but it makes a difference when you're painting. By letting the paint settle slightly differently, it gives a lot more depth than if it was smooth. I realized that the horn is much more chunky than I was originally making it, so it's time to bulk it out a little more. Off camera, I've been baking some things, like the middle gem and the first couple thorns. I find it's a lot easier to attach them to the main body once they're solid and I don't have to worry about squishing the details with my fingers. horn is so natural looking. It's like it was grown into this shape instead of being built at the smithy. So there aren't a ton of hard edges until we get down to the leather wrappings. I'm still very much learning how to sculpt and it probably takes me longer than a lot of people to get it right. I'm at the stage where I know how to see if what I've done is off, but I don't always know how to fix it right away. That's why there's a lot of trial and error in my work. It definitely can be frustrating to have this sense that everything is wrong, but no real action plan. I have quite a number of small projects that are sitting around waiting for me to have the breakthrough to finish them. This word plateau is definitely part of the learning process that I wish I could speed up. If you have any sort of self-doubt issues, this can be a place where they all really kick into overdrive. Sometimes when people tell me my stuff is good, but I can see all the areas where I'm not improving, I just feel like I'm tricking them. They don't actually know that I don't know what I'm doing. Imposter syndrome is a killer, but I've been trying to remind myself that it's okay that I don't know what I'm doing. That's literally what learning is, and it doesn't invalidate the work I've done so far. Whoops, this is supposed to be a lighthearted crafting video. Back to that.
There was a ton of blending to get things to look like they belonged together. One thing that worked well for me was to cut some strips of clay to wrap around the base of the thorns and then blend that. Up until this project, I hadn't used this side of my needle tool that much, but I really love it. It's a really nice shape, with a point but not too pointy bit that can get into crevices, and rounded edges so I'm smoothing the work instead of cutting or dragging. It's also a lot sturdier than my silicone tools, which is great for when I need to move a lot of clay at the same time. 10 out of 10 would recommend! Got a couple thorns on, so let's see how we compare to the reference. Looking okay from the front, but I didn't bulk it out enough yet. Time to give it a top bump. It took me a while to get it right. I couldn't figure out how much of a bump I really needed to make it look right when the thorns are on. Lots of guesswork. baked the main body yet, so I kept having to repair the edges when I squashed things. I probably could have baked it here, but I was still unsure about the overall dimensions, and it's easier to remove unbaked clay if I need to. Gotta keep those edges neat! Okay, on to this weird bolt plaque. Still not sure exactly how this makes the weapon smash faces better, but we're going with it. Let's add a little extra here so we can carve in these scars. The process for this part was surprisingly similar to creating prosthetic latex cuts. You build up a little extra, then cut it, make the edges look a little ragged. The only thing missing here is fake blood! Off camera, I also built up the back a little more. I noticed there was a rectangular lump on the back that I hadn't built before, so I fixed it. I'm actually using a little water here. This is still super sculpy firm, so it's not like it needs water to stay malleable, but having a little water on my finger helps me get the clay smooth and not have drag marks from my fingerprints. It doesn't hurt the clay as far as I can tell. Please forgive the weird strobing, I promise it goes away soon. I've been having some issues with my phone camera. If any of you have some recommendations for good cameras that handle autofocus and white balance better, drop them in the comments, please! I guess this little metal piece is supposed to hold the gem in? Not sure, but it's a cool design element. It's actually two-toned, so this will be fun to paint up later. Oh, and I finally baked the main horn! I felt pretty good about things, so it was time!
putting aside the main body for now, I'm actually making a little stamp. I wanted to make sure I could do these little sets of four squares really even, and this seemed like the best way to do it. Sorry about the angle, sometimes I work really close to my face and forget to check my viewfinder. I freehanded the X, but made another little stamp for the teardrops. The first one was far too fat and not the right dimensions, so I made a second one that's longer and didn't use the teardrop stamp. But that was too big, so I made the third even smaller and built out the bezel. And it was still not small enough, so I scrapped the stamps and just went freehand, this time actually looking at the horn for scale. Time to give it a little jacket! This is going to be how I add the Puke Puke scales. If you don't play Monster Hunter, Puke Puke are these flying monsters that have gorgeous green and blue bodies, cute orange cheek spots, and this weird big pinky purple tongue. Also these really big bulgy eyes. I actually think it's weirdly cute. I don't know if I can put an image in the video, but this hunting horn is from the weapon tree based on this monster. I love all the weapons in this game, and the armor. I definitely have things in my in-game wishlist to craft, just so I can get better pictures so I can real life craft. There are going to be a lot of little feathers, and also some scales that looked like feathers, so I took a piece of brass tubing and crimped it to make a teardrop shape. Mini cookie cutter! I made a few of these and set them aside. I experimented a little with the scales and eventually settled on this. I'm using a couple sizes of ball tools to make a custom rolling pin to roll the texture on. I think I've been watching too many baking shows. Everything is a baking metaphor right now. Before I use this, I'm covering it in badger balm. I've used oils before and that works just as well. If you don't, there's a risk of the clay sticking into the texture and not getting a clean transfer. Rolling this was so satisfying. Okay, adding scales at the top. At first I thought they were feathers since they were the same shape, but once I stared at the reference pics, I found out they were lying to me. Since there were different sizes of scales, I took another smaller brass tube and crimped that. These are actually pretty easy to find in craft stores and hardware stores. Then all you need is a way to cut them and some pliers to crimp. Now let's add actual feathers near the bottom like a tutu. I also baked the scale texture before working on this. There was no way I could put the feathers on without ruining the scales. 
There are more layers of feathers on the actual horn, but I think this was enough to get the idea of it without making the clay really thin and more breakable, or using a more delicate material. I really wanted the whole thing to be clay, so this was an area I had to take a little artistic license. Now for the base of the handle. I'm starting out really chunky so I can roughly carve it down. It's a rustic handle. Also I'm going to be doing the same thing to the bottom here with a little jacket for scales and then some leather. I'm also adding on the bolt bits of the bolt plate. Usually I'd just put these on with super glue, but I know I'll be baking it a bunch more times and really don't want those fumes. So we're using Liquid Sculpey. What's also cool about Liquid Sculpey is it does kind of melt a little as it bakes, but then it firms up instead of disappearing completely. So it's not perfect for creating like perfect dots because it can be unpredictable, but it's great for things like fake welding lines. It's also perfect for combining with a tiny bit of other clay to make fake icing. But that's a tutorial for another time. This is a weapon, not a cake. Off camera, I added a thin layer of liquid sculpey to the handle. Since the handle is baked, the liquid sculpey helps things adhere. I cut a strip for the wrap on the handle and I'm spiraling it with just a little space in between the wrap. I'm texturing the edges of the wrap so it looks like it's sort of fraying on the edges. There are some weird bumps on the scales, so let's get those on too. I'm attaching them with Liquid Sculpey again. Time for a second jacket! This time, it's the leather wrapping on top of the scales. I'm going in with my flat silicone tool and creating the stitch lines. For all this leather, I'll be creating the groove first, then going back in with my needle tool and making little stitches. Also, I wanted to point out this really cool thorn. It was a complete surprise that it turned out marbled. I had some really old Super Sculpey firm that was getting a bit crumbly with age, so I like to revitalize it with some clay softener and, you guessed it, Liquid Sculpey. Apparently I was using a combination of the older clay and the fresher clay when I was making the thorns, and one went a little more singy in the oven. Nothing is burned, and it looks so cool! Too bad all this gets painted in the end. Let's do these flaps next. I made a paper template and purposely made it a little big so that I can cut it down to fit perfectly. Now comes the part I've been secretly dreading, the straps. It was important to me that they stand off from the body of the sculpt so it looks like they're pulled tight and not glued on. So I ended up making some straps connected to rings, then manipulating those on. First one's down, many more to go. 
I also attached the guild symbol with more liquid Sculpey and made a cute little buckle for the back. I gave myself some heartache with this one. I have a baking support in the oven to help the thorns not settle in weird ways as I keep rebaking, and I didn't realize until I took it out that I completely smushed the first buckle. So this is the second one. Liquid Sculpey was key here to making sure the straps stayed on the rings. All the rings and straps are on, and that completes this build. There were a few parts that I skipped over, but this was such a long episode. I hope you like the detailed look at the sculpting process. Next up is the paint job. Let me know if you like this two-part process, or if you'd like to see everything in one episode. If you're a Monster Hunter fan, let me know your favorite weapons in the comments below. I love reading your reactions. Thanks for making it through this long episode, and see you in the next one!